Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, today, Guru Maharaj is going to give the continuing on the series of Damodar Leela. And uh, we are going to start from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 9th Chapter, 12th verse onwards. Over to you. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tatva Tasmi Tatva Yasmin Sutam Bitam Vigyayar Bhaka Vatsala Ye say kila tamba dum damna tad virya go vida. Translation Mother Yasoda was always overwhelmed by intense love for Krishna, not knowing who Krishna was or how powerful he was. Because of maternal, maternal affection for Krishna, she never even cared to know who he was. Therefore, when she saw that her son had become excess, excessively afraid, she threw the stick away and desired to bind him so that he would not commit any further naughty activities. Purport. Mother Yasoda wanted to bind Krishna not in order to chastise him, but because she thought that the child was so restless that he might leave the house in fear. That would be another disturbance. Therefore, because of full affection, she stopped Krishna from leaving the house. She wanted to bind him with rope. Mother Yasoda wanted to impress upon Krishna that since he was afraid merely to see her stick, he should not perform such disturbing activities as breaking the container of yogurt and butter and distributing its contents to the monkeys. Mother Yasoda did not care to understand who Krishna was or how his power spreads everywhere. This is an example of pure love for Krishna. Om Gyantamirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksun Melitam Yena Tasma Shigal Veda Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stati Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Padati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishna Rutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamale Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Nene Rishesa Sunya Vadi Pasyatya De Sitari Nene Pancha Kalpa Tarugas Chakrupa Sindhu Kaeva Chapatita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Mm -hmm. There are two levels of spiritual existence. There is the Vaikuntha realm, where the planets of the Vishnu manifestations of the Lord, and along with the mountain, the Narayan manifestations of the Lord have their abodes. They are eternal planets, and those who purify their heart in love of God in the mood of worshiping the Supreme, in the mood of the Supreme, they attain to the Vaikuntha realms. <laughs> And there's different Vishnu manifestations, therefore there's different planets, Narayan manifestations also. Out of all of the Narayan manifestations, the highest is Sri Ram, Ayodhya Dham in the spiritual world. Ayodhya Dham here in the material world is a reflection of that spiritual realm. 
but in the spiritual world is the the actual essence or the original existence. And so Lord Nishringadev has his planet there. Lord Vamanadev has his planet there. All the Lila avatars have their planets there. But then there's another realm of existence that is not as big, but is more elevated in pure loving devotion. And that is the realm of Golokada or Vaikuntadam, not Vaikuntadam, Vrindavandam. It is a, what we see in this world is a replica of the Vrindavandam, but in the spiritual world is the actual essence or the original Vrindavandam. There Krishna is in his, his pure essence of himself. He doesn't play the role of God. He plays the role of the loving friend, loving child, loving lover, the object of everyone's devotion, everyone's attention and which is full of varieties, full of various types of activities in each of the different moods. This is the highest realm, it's called Golokadam. It's interesting, it's also called Goloka. Loka means planet and Go means cow. It's the planet of the cows. People have a hard time to understand that God is a cowherd boy. Sounds a little bit anthropomorphic. That when the Lord comes to the material world, he plays the role of a cowherd boy. But that's his actual role in the spiritual world too. They think, well, God is, your, your portrayal of God is something like what we see in the Indian continent where people take care of cows and protect cows. So therefore you, you project that, you anthropomorphize that particular mood and that is the way you worship. But actually that is not true. Golokadam is the original spiritual planet. It is eternal and it is the place of the Lord's intimate abode. <clears throat> Those who reach that realm have reached the highest form of spiritual perfection in loving devotion. The intensification of the love of the devotees in Sri Brindavandam or Golokadam is at its highest form of intensification. It's even more intense than those in the realm of uh, Vaikuntha. Why? Because the loving mood is that Krishna is in need. He's a boy, he plays, he needs some food. He needs clothes, he needs protection. He plays games. He gets defeated in playing games with his friends. Just like an ordinary person in this material world goes through these similar experiences, but Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of the Godhead is the actual prototype or the prime example for, for the reality we experience in this world. But the difference is everything there is in pure love. There is no inebriates. There is no deficiencies. There's no deteriorations. And so those who make it to that realm become his eternal associates. And Krishna has a special group of eternal associates, which he is known to be connected with. His cowherd friends that are particularly de designated by their particular names and forms and activities along with his mother and father Yasoda Nanda Maharaj 
the gopis headed by Srimati Radharani, Lalita, Vishaka, Tunga Devi, many of the great <clears throat> uh, female manifestations of pure love of God in the mood of the, the cowherd girls. This is the realm, this is the spiritual realm. It's not an imagination. It's not a, a reflection of the material world imprinted upon a particular type of form of worship that is actually the place where God has his most intimate and most natural, and I use that word natural, experience. And one of the qualities that's being mentioned here is that Mother Yasoda, she's his mother, so she's the perfect mother. She has complete love for Krishna and her love is very attentive to everything that he needs. And she doesn't care if he's God. She doesn't care that he is the all powerful force in existence. It doesn't really make any difference to her. In fact, one time when she looked into the mouth of Krishna, when Krishna was being <clears throat> was being chastised by her because she had received the news that he was eating dirt. And being a concerned mother, she was thinking if he eats dirt, he's gonna get sick. So I'm gonna take the dirt out of his mouth. So she opened the mouth to see where the dirt was. But what she saw was something different. She saw all the, the entire cosmic creation with all the galaxies, the planets, the stars, everything that makes up the universal affairs in the mouth of Krishna, along with seeing herself in the mouth of Krishna, looking into Krishna's mouth. She became a little bewildered. She wasn't sure what she was seeing. She thought she was dreaming. Then for one second, she thought, oh, my son is God. As soon as that happened, she completely forgot the next second. She completely forgot. And she doesn't care. Because it doesn't matter that Krishna is God. There's a beautiful story where one time the cowherd boys were with Krishna. Krishna had just killed this big demon. So the cowherd boy said to Krishna, this was in the spiritual world. Um, Krishna. You know, I play with you and I wrestle with you and I beat you. But I can't kill these big demons. How do you do it? And so all the cowherd boys are gathering around Krishna. They want to know, how does Krishna kill these big demons that come? So they start guessing. And they're going back and forth. And one boy says, well, every day before he goes out, his mother puts on these amulets around his arms. And inside these amulets are special, special mantras. And they give him protection. And he has so much power. Another boy said, that's pretty close. But actually, his mother, she chants these mantras into his ear in the morning before he leaves. And then when he's out there and these demons attack, he chants these mantras and he becomes so powerful that he can kill these demons. So they're all guessing. <laughs> so Krishna, he's just sitting there. He's kind of smiling, not saying anything. Finally, he says, do you really want to know? And then they become even more excited to gather closer to Krishna. Yeah, tell us, how do you do it? Well, then Krishna starts to narrate <clears throat> the history. He said, when I was first born, there was a great sage, his name was Gargamuni. He had a special private meeting with my father. And he's told my father in confidence, that this boy who was just born to you, he appears in different manifestations in different colors. And he is as good as Narayan. And then he went on to say, actually, he is not as good as Narayan. He is Narayan. 
So my father didn't tell anybody, but he knows. And so if you really want to know, I'm God. <laughs> he tells his friend I'm God. <laughs> and they start looking at each other in a, in a very doubtful way. <laughs> And he's saying he's God. <laughs> and then they start laughing. And then they're laughing. And then finally all the boys are laughing. And then Krishna picks up on the whole thing. And he's laughing too. <laughs> and then everybody is just laughing and laughing and laughing. And finally, the boys say, all right, let's just go play. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't really care. And Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. The cause of all causes is all powerful. When we worship in the temple, the deities that stand in front of us are in the form of Radha and Krishna. So you might ask the question, well, you don't worship Radha and Krishna with opulence and you don't bow down before them as the supreme personality of Godhead. But we see here in our deity worship, we're worshiping them in Aishwarya Bhav with opulence, with so many rules and regulations. That's not the mood of Vrindavan and that's Radha and Krishna on the altar. So what happened? Well, Pancharetriki system of the Vedas explained that for temple worship, one has to worship in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. <clears throat> so when we worship the deity in the temple, although Krishna is standing there in his threefold bending form playing on his flute, and he's got his bugle horn there, and he's got his stick for herding cows, still we worship him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is contrary to the mood of Vrindavan. So what, how does that work for us? The idea is that when your devotion reaches the level of spontaneous loving devotional service, and Krishna reveals himself through your, through your worship as Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham, then you still may offer devotion in the mood of Aishwarya, but you are spontaneously attracted to that. And so you're in the mood of Vrindavan, although you're still doing the external affairs of Aishwarya Bhav. As Prabhupada said, we can't just go up to the deities and jump on his back and steal his flute. <laughs> it's not, that's what they do in Vrindavan. Uh, he said, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> But that's the, the mood of Vrindavan in Vrindavan. <clears throat> and even when Krishna came to what is called, um, what is it called? Aprakat or, or prak, uh, 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 Prakat Vrindavan, manifested Vrindavan in the material world. That tract of land, 32 mile tract of land, which we know as Mathura Vrindavan, that is the replica of the spiritual world. And when Krishna was there, his devotees were worshiping him in the mood of uh, Madhurya or sweetness, the beautiful cowherd boy of Vrindavan. So here we get an interesting little insight by this particular. This description given by Srila Prabhupada here in the purport that uh, Mother Yasoda, she's absorbed in her mood as Mother Yasoda. It's her son. Her love for her, him is so strong that she cannot stop thinking about him. She's always taking care of him. She's making sure he's, everything is okay with him. She does everything constantly 24 hours a day she's absorbed in krishna in pure love and when krishna misbehaves she acts as the correcting mother sometimes the chastising mother as we see here in this leela 
But you see here, Krishna, he's in his mood of Vrindavan, which is his natural mood, which is him. And she sees he's he's afraid. She's carrying a stick. She didn't she wasn't intending to use the stick to punish him. She was just trying to scare him so he would stop his mischief. Mischief. What she saw having the stick increased his fear, so she threw the stick away. <laughs> and then of course. We go on to where she binds him with ropes. So this is, you get a little indication here of the mood of Vrindavan from Mother Yasoda's devotion. And that is the, that is the highest and most sweetest. And Chris, Prabhupada said Krishna likes when his devotees come to the point of worshiping him in that mood. Because then, uh, Prabhupada gives the example. There was one very big man in India. He was like a governor. And, you know, governor, very respectable. He sees people all day, very businesslike. They're very, uh, they, they, approve, they, approve, they approach him with great respect and uh, honor. But, one time, there was one man he wanted to come and see his governor. And so uh, his servant, his assistant secretary, said, he's busy right now. Uh, you'll have to wait. So he was waiting in the waiting room. And then he was waiting for a long time. And he was thinking, what is he doing? It's been more than an hour I've been waiting. So he decided to peek in. So he went to the door and he opened the door. And he saw that this governor was playing horsey with his little kid, his grandson. His grandson was riding on his back and he was crawling on all floors, fours on the floor, carrying his little son, little grandson around and playing with him in different ways. So Prabhupada said, yeah, you see even a big man, he, he likes to be, you know, has show loving affections to his those who are dear to him. So he throws away all of, all of the reverence, all of the formalities. His wife might she she won't call him Mr. Governor. She'll call him by his first name, or sometimes she has a pet name for him. She calls him that name. His children call him Daddy, and then so when he's at home, when he's with his family. He's in a different mood, but when he's in the office, it's all it's also a different mood. So that's Krishna. So when he comes to the material world as Vishnu or Narayan, it's, it's very official, very the mood of worship. But when he's in Vrindavan, he is his natural self playing, sometimes getting chastised, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, doing mischief. This is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And there was one great philosopher when he heard that, that God likes to dance, he said, this is the real image of God, a God that dances. <laughs> Sometimes you see it in religious traditions, they have God, he's more like a scorekeeper. You know, at the end of life, he sits there in his judgmental mood. All right, you go to heaven, you go to hell. All he does is just, you know, you know, give you your the results of your destiny, and he gives you so many rules and regulations to follow on your while you're in the world. And they have God as this strict autocrat who makes life rough for you when, when, you're, when you're in the material world. <laughs> and, and when you die, you, you make sure you get, the, get punished. <laughs> so God is the autocrat. God is the judge. You know, like that. 
man, people worship God for like, they want something, please give me good health. So God is their doctor. Or please make me make my garden grow with so many nice flowers and fruits. God is the gardener. <laughs> or please protect my house that the thieves might decide to steal. So please protect this. So God is the security guard. <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati uses these examples. How people see God as their security guard, their gardener, their doctor. <laughs> so many things. <laughs> but we see God as the little, the sweet little devotee, the sweet little boy of Rindavan who loves to enjoy loving relationships with his friends, with his parents, with his mother. And even we can qualify to, to come up to that standard of devotion through the process of pure devotional service and become perfect, enter into Sri Vrindavan Dham and become one of Krishna's eternal associates in, in different moods with Krishna as the center, which is full of variety, full of knowledge and eternally existing <laughs> and always joyful. Okay, a little bit about the spiritual world. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this is very wonderful uh, pastime, Guru Maharaj. And thank you so much for explaining so in detail. And uh, even um, by listening to these pastimes, uh, uh, we get a lot of joy. And uh, I sometimes feel that... Um, I wish I would. Uh, I was there in Krishna's Leela too, as a little ant, maybe. <laughs> so um, yeah, just keep going, and you'll get there sooner. You'll get there someday. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Your mercy. So uh, it's very um, and so enlivening pastimes, and we get a lot of joy listening to these pastimes. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, the... devotees, uh, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, please go ahead. Shri Devi Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Thank you, uh, Srimati. Please, please accept my whole obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for uh, relating these beautiful enchanting pastimes of baby Krishna. As you were speaking about how lo the Lord loves intimacy and uh, loving uh, mood, I was remembering that pastime where Sanatan Goswami came across this family in Vrindavan, where the deity was literally being treated like a family member. The mother would wake up in the morning and then she would feed a baby Krishna along with all her children and put him to bed with uh, you know her kids. And he was shocked. How can you treat the Lord like this? How can you uh, you know behave with the Lord like this? He is the Lord. And then the lady got so frightened and she started bathing herself and dressing herself and now engaging in formally worshipping. And then the Lord came to Sanatan Goswami in a dream and said, why did you have to spoil all my fun? <laughs> I was having such a good time and you came and you messed up everything. So <laughs> It's, uh, you know, the sweet mood of these Brajavasis, their simple heartedness and their natural love. It's a very exalted state. We cannot even understand these things. But I was we thinking... Have, we have the example of Bamsi Das. He would carry his Gordonitai deities everywhere with him. And then he would take him down to the river and he would, he would dunk him in the river and give him a bath <laughs> and then dry him off and carry him. Sometimes he would chastise them. <laughs> Bumsi, Bumsi, Bumsi Ananda or Bumsi Dari? Bumsi Adari, I think. He's a, he was, he was a, somewhat of an avid Duda. Yeah. He lived in the area of Navadut. <laughs> but he was another one that was like that. <laughs> 
he would just carry his deities around. And sometimes he would chastise them. Sometimes he would feed them. Sometimes he would bathe them. And they, he had no home for the deities. He would just carry them around with him. Yes, Guru Maharaj, when we hear these pastimes, we know that these are very, very exalted souls. Their hearts are completely pure and they have just pure love for the Lord and they have loving dealings. But when we, when we worship the Lord, uh, we should not become like familiar or, or uh, take it for granted and say, oh, Krishna, I forgot this offering or uh, oh, Krishna, I didn't do this properly. I mean, we should be trying to improve our, our um, worship. Is that the right mood or am I not getting something here? Well, that's what you've been doing all along, right? Yes, <laughs> trying to. <laughs> yeah, that means you're okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, through, through Aishwarya Bhav, worshiping the Lord, as the Lord and providing him with everything, all the opulences and all the requirements for the worship, you develop attraction for that. As your attraction develops, you start to, to develop a more and more attachment. And as attachment comes, then devotion becomes more spontaneous. When it starts reading the spontaneous, last one, and then, and then, of course, there is a, a prince, there is a protocol to follow, and you start following that protocol of spontaneous sadhana, and you can come to the level of worshiping God in a more natural and spontaneous way, like the residents of Vrindavan. But that's that's not something you can just simply, you know, surreptitiously apply. It has to be done through the process of bhakti. It's a gradual process. As the love increases, the attraction decreases, the, the attraction increases, the attachment becomes stronger, and then the worship starts to become more intimate. Mm -hmm. That's our process. And if you're in, if you have that eternal relationship with Krishna, it will be revealed through spontaneous devotional service. So whatever level, we must just keep going and we must try to uh, improve it and, and uh, try to make it better and better. And that will be pleasing and that will help us to move to the next level. Well, that's true. But when you get at a certain level and then you are what we say, qualified to pra practice what they call it spontaneous devotional sadhana then you have to follow the rules and regulations for that and that's nicely described in the Bhagavatam in different places but Shiva Ram Maharaj has put it all together in a nice book called spontaneous devotional service and one of the things is that sometimes somehow for a long time in our society we, we, we were rejecting that whole thing, saying that was pretentious, that was sahajya. But it's actually part of our process. But it has to be done according to the principles given by the gurus and the shastras. And uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj puts it all together nicely in that book. Prabhupada talks about it in different places. But he doesn't give a particular uh, you know, yeah, he also says, you know, he says, you can also become like Prahlad Maharaj. But he says, you know, you can't just jump up to that level. You have to follow the process. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, Vaidhi Bhakti has, uh, I mean, Sadhana Bhakti has Vaidhi and Raghunuga Bhakti. Raghunuga Bhakti is spontaneous devotional service. If you don't come to Raganuga Bhakti, then you will not reach perfection. You'll mm -hmm. stop at a certain point. And that's where the guru comes in to guide you and to help you go to the next stage. Mm 
But first you have to start coming to the point of chanting without offense before you can get to that stage. You have to come to at least Nama Bas before you can come to spontaneous devotional service. You're still on Nama Parad, uh, committing the 10 offenses, then, then you can't adopt this, uh, this uh, Vaganuga Sadhana. Read that book by Shiva Ram Maharaj. It's, yes, I've mentioned it so, so many times. It's a yes, must yes. read. Every devotee should read that book. Okay. And understand how the process works from one of this one stage to another. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'll try and get the book and read it. I think it may be there in the library here. It's very small. Okay. You Thank can you. read it. In, you can read it in one day. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Can't wait for you to come back here. We're all eagerly waiting for you to come back. I've been checking the temperature, and it's really cold there. <laughs> <laughs> You got you up you're down to like two degrees, right? And yes. I'm 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 at fifteen degrees, and so. <laughs> so of course we can do that. <laughs> now so, I know why Krishna sent you there, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> but that's not the reason. The reason is I still have a few stopovers before I get there. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Everyone is waiting for you. Everyone is asking, when is Guru Maharaj coming back? I said, I can't wait I, too. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. And what is any more questions? Sir? Guru Maharaj, I guess uh, there are no more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay, no comments? Sri Devi Mataji, you want to? Um, I just uh, wanted to share an amusing uh, anecdote, Guru Maharaj. Once uh, the early devotees, you know, thinking that they should show love for she, uh, for little baby Gopal, they had, I think, a Ladu Gopal or something. They put him and took him for a walk and things like that. So when Srila Prabhupada came to know about it, he said, no, no, you can't do such things. This is not <laughs> to be done. You have to worship him in a proper mood and in a proper way. So sometimes we can get carried away by hearing these pastimes and think that we can also do, you know, on the spontaneous platform. Just yeah. yeah. When you're on the spontaneous platform, you know it. You don't have to somehow or other guess, you know. It, it's, it's, it comes naturally. Okay, good Maharaj. I think uh, there are no more questions or comments. Good Maharaj. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. And we look forward to your more sessions, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Oh, I, f I should mention tomorrow I have a doctor's appointment at 11 o'clock, which is the same time as the class. So I'm not able to do the class tomorrow. So okay. maybe you can search around and see. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Who might be a good candidate? Sure, Guru Maharaj. I'll do that. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much, Guru Maharaj, for that, your that's time. Just, that's just for tomorrow. So yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Okay. Thank you Hare so much. Krishna.
हरे कृष्ण गुरु महाराज थैंक यू सो मच